How's it going, everyone? Andy Sean 45 coming at you. It's time to answer another question. And this one comes from a user who calls himself Joe Diamond. And Joe's question is this. Sean, do you think the Bears are a fluke this season, or do you think that they'll be good for years to come? Well, Joe, and everyone else for that matter, this is probably not the best time for me to be a answering this question because I just got done watching the Bears beat the Rams on Sunday Night Football. Bear down, baby. Hell yeah. Officially a winning season, and I love it. Ugh, I know what a lot of you are thinking right now. You're thinking, oh great, Sean's going to go full homer on us right now. That's not true. Those of you who have been watching me for a long time, you know that I'm fair. You know that I don't bullshit. And I tell you the truth about my teams, no matter if it's Notre Dame, the Bears, the Cubs, the Blackhawks, whoever. If I think they're going to be bad, I'll say that they'll be bad. So I don't lie to you guys. And if you haven't figured it out by now, well, now you know. But uh, anyway, Joe, to, to God's honest truth answering your question here, no, I don't think the Bears are a fluke this year. And it's the latter of your question. I think they will be good for years to come after this season. Just because of the fact alone that we're seeing all the pieces of the puzzle fall into place here with this franchise. General Manager Ryan Pace, um, he goes out and gets his, his coach in, in Matt Nagy. And honestly, the McCaskey should have let, the, let him do this as soon as they brought him in. You know, they fire uh, Mark Tressman. They fire then GM, uh, what's his name, uh, with the thick glasses, um, Phil Emery. That's right. They fire the two of them. They bring in Ryan Pace. Instead of letting Pace get his own guy, they go to Ernie Accorsi and bring in him as a consultant, and he leads us to John Fox. Enough said. That turned out to be a god-awful fail. Now, had, they, had the McCaskies just let Ryan Pace get his own guy from the start, what the Bears are doing th uh, this year right now we probably would have seen them doing this several years ago. Uh, but that's only speculation. But Ryan Pace brings in Matt Nagy. Now, a first-time head coach, you got to expect him to make mistakes, which he has done. There's no, there's no secret about that, and it's shown. But there's so much good that he's done, too. I, I mean, and the good outweighs the bad. Matt Nagy... Uh, he, he relates very well with his players. You know, he comes from that Andy Reid coaching tree. He called the plays in Kansas City last year, and he had a lot of success. Um, and also, I think his system is perfect for a guy in Mitchell Trubisky who ran a similar offense at North, at North Carolina. Now, it's a complicated system. I, and I think even Alex Smith said that it took him three years to actually perfect it. So it, it's not easy. And... You know, like I said, uh, Matt Nagy, he's going to make some mistakes. He's going to have to, you know, figure out the learning curve. And so far, he's done a fantastic job as a first-time head coach. Now, moving on from Matt Nagy to Mitchell Trubisky. This guy is miles and miles ahead of where he was a year ago. I mean, the, approve, the improvement has been phenomenal. I think after tonight's game against Los Angeles, I think he's now at 21 touchdowns to 11 or 12 interceptions, something like that. Now, I will admit, tonight against the Rams, three interceptions. That's not something that you like to see on a stat sheet, and I don't deny that. But that doesn't mean that this is a bad quarterback we have here. I mean, when... When Pace first uh, drafted, or drafted, when he first traded up to get Trubisky, I was very skeptical about that. There's a video of, uh, sh uh, that I did showing that. But so far, it's starting to pay off. Uh, and look, people see those numbers, 21 touchdowns, uh, 12 interceptions. And, you know, especially the people, according to the people on the Chicago Bears 24-7 Sports Facebook page, you would think this is the worst quarterback we've ever had. I mean, seriously, guys, if you get a chance, go to that page on Facebook. Chicago Bears 24-7 Sports, and you will see the worst of the Chicago Bears fan base. I mean, reading these comments on that page, these people are borderline retarded Neanderthals. I hate saying it, guys, but we have, the Chicago Bears fan base, we have some of the worst fans in the NFL. I hate to say it, but it's true, and this page on Facebook proves that. Some of the most asinine, dumbest comments I've ever read in my life. I mean, the, the expectations these people have, you know, they expect him to have Hall of Fame numbers right from the start of his career. It's like they expect 400 yard passing, or 400 yards passing, and five or six touchdowns every single game. 
It's not realistic. And their comparison or their their uh, argument is, oh, well, look what Patrick Mahomes is doing in Kansas City. Well, listen. I'm not knocking Patrick Mahomes. I'm not calling him a fluke. I think he's a great quarterback, and he's done a phenomenal job early in his career. But guys like him are a rare commodity. There are only quarterbacks that you see once in a blue moon. That's not a normal... Those aren't normal results for a second-year quarterback. So most of the time, the guys that you draft are going to need to take... They're going to need time to develop. So what what these guys on the Chicago Bears 24-7 sports page don't get about that or understand... I don't know, but they're, all I know is they're complete. They're complete. Re, they're complete retards. It's it, and their their expectations are just unrealistic. But you guys can read the comments for yourself. But look, I'm sorry to rant about that when I should be answering a question. But just you see, you see stupid comments and stupid people. I just I had to get it off my chest. I just, I just had to. But look, Mitch has proven to be a pretty damn good quarterback for us, and. You know, he's getting better all the time. It's plenty of things he needs to work on, like bringing his throws down. But once he nails it, he's going to be good. And he's going to be a force to reckon with. And not only has he been able to improve on his passing, but he's able to, he's been able to get out of trouble with his legs. So, this, I mean, this is a guy that can run. He did that a couple times tonight. Um, but anyway, moving on from Trubisky, our receiving core. I mean, a year ago at this time, our number one wideout was Cameron Meredith. And who else was behind him? Nobody. I mean, when Cameron Meredith is your number one receiver, your offense is in trouble. Well, look what Ryan Pace did this offseason. Signs Allen Robinson. Signs Taylor Gabriel. Signs Trey Burton. Three guys right there who are proven playmakers. Now, you can make the argument for Trey Burton. I mean, he was the he was only he was a third tight end on the depth chart for the Eagles Super Bowl team. That's fair, but so far he's shown that he can be a reliable target. Has he actually lived up to his contract to this point? That's up for debate. Probably lean, leaning towards no, but he's he is a weapon that you can go to. And then, in addition to that, in the draft earlier this year. Pace trades back up into the second round to take Anthony Miller, the stud wide receiver out of Memphis. Big time playmaker, and he's he we've seen glimpses of that here in his rookie season, which has been pretty damn good. Not perfect, but give this kid some time, he is going to be a stud. So you go from Cameron Meredith being your only weapon, what little of a weapon we had last year, to four guys on your receiving core that you can rely on. And then our running backs, Jordan Howard, the power back, and Tariq Cohen, who is proving to be a steal from last year's draft. All that he can do, how fast he is, and even he's a threat in the receiving game. So this offense is miles ahead of where it was a year ago, getting better all the time. If you can just erase the mistakes, we're going to be great. The defensive side of things, I mean, what more? Do, what really do I need to say? And honestly, guys, when we drafted Roquan Smith with the seventh overall pick uh, earlier this year, I thought our defense was dramatically improved by that pick alone. But then Notre Dame-Michigan weekend, I'm riding with my brother up to South Bend to the game. Um, He's driving. I'm sitting in the passenger seat. I'm checking scores from other games. And then I see it on the headlines. And I'm like, holy shit. My brother's like, what? What's going on, Sean? I'm like, you're not going to believe this, dude. He's like, well, what is it? I'm like, Chicago Bears finalizing deal to acquire Khalil Mack. My brother's like, you got to be kidding me. Really? And I'm like, that's what it says here, dude. And sure enough, later that night, it was finalized. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this defense just instantly got got better. They're going to be top 10. And that's been the case so far. I mean, you got playmakers all over the place on this defense. Aside from Khalil Mack, you have Akeem Hicks, who has been just having probably one of the best seasons of his career. And then you got Eddie Goldman, freaking uh, uh, Roquan Smith, as I mentioned already, uh, Leonard Floyd, who's finally starting to come around, Danny Trevathan, um, uh, unsung hero uh, Bryce Callahan, who stepped in and did a phenomenal job. And then the defensive backfield, Eddie Jackson, big time steal. 
I mean, how, how this guy dropped all the way to the fourth round is beyond me, but what he's done for us has been incredible. And then the corners, Prince of Mukamara and Kyle Fuller. I mean, all the takeaways that we have on defense this year, it proves, it proves how good these these moves have been by Ryan Pace have, have panned out. It's been phenomenal. I mean, look, I don't know if you can compare this team to the 85 Bears, but there's a lot of similarities there. I mean, it's just, it has that feeling. And granted, I was born in 86. I was 10 days old when the Bears won the Super Bowl. So I, I obviously wasn't, I wasn't able to enjoy it. But just, of course, I've watched highlights like everybody else does. But there's, this team this year has a lot of feel to that. Not the same, but there's, it's, there's similarities to it. I mean, you know, the 85 team, they all wrote a letter to uh, keep Buddy Ryan well, same thing here with Vic Fangio. Uh, Matt Nagy decided to keep him, and it was a smart move. So just this whole team is coming together. And you give this another year or two, especially on offense when all those guys are able to uh, to get the system down and just completely gel, <laughs> the, the Bears are going to come into the 21st century big time, and they're going to be a force to reckon with. So just... Every, everything is coming full circle. Everything is coming together with the, with the Bears franchise. And, you know, maybe just uh, I think the McCaskies finally found a guy in, in Ryan Pace who has this figured out. And it, it's, it's, it's paying dividends on the field. The results don't lie. I mean, I think they're what? It, at least in my opinion, I think the Bears are if – get, if they get to 10 wins, they pretty much uh, have the division. Two, two clinches it for sure. But – I just to, to just to go to go from five wins to what the Bears are doing now, it's incredible. It really is. So yes, yes, Joe, I do think this team is not not only are they not a fluke, but they've got a good thing going here to where they're going to be good for years to come. If you know everybody stays healthy and they keep learning and getting getting things down to a T, look out. The Bears are coming, baby. The Bears are coming bear freaking down so uh so joe thank you for the question that's one i really enjoyed answering um i don't know how long you've been watching me but uh thank you for being a subscriber and a viewer and thank you for your question so with that said guys this is Zendy sean 45 signing off god bless bear down and go irish